Freenas 11.2 U6 is out and we've been loading systems with it and they're happy and running fine. So this is our main server right here that actually I edit and push all these videos to. It's been updated to the latest version. I updated it, well, first thing this morning really early and just now getting around to doing a video here this afternoon. But there's been a, uh, not a lot of changes, but a few. One of the first ones that caught my eye was this whole iconic hybrid cloud media management that's now native built into FreeNAS. And this is a tool that I actually wasn't aware of until they released it into FreeNAS, but it looks pretty cool. This is a paid service, nothing free, but it's a, a big discover, collaborate. Iconic is a safe place for all your creative work. You can store and share your files, collaborate on projects, and create your most iconic work ever. Um, like I said, I haven't done a lot to even, I don't know what the pricing is yet on here, because I don't think they have it listed. They have all their plans, but not all the details related to them, but still looks pretty cool. Um, I do a lot of media management with here. If, like I said, FreeNAS is where I store all my videos. So this is a, a up and coming promising thing. One of the other things I caught my eye was Tavis Ormandy from Google's Project Zero found a memory corruption, uh, double free vulnerability in a certificate verification API that was updated. And this is a little bit interesting because I didn't know Tavis was poking at the FreeBSD authentication uh, system, the GNU TLS that was updated to 3.68. And because this is a BSD, uh, GNU TLS and FreeNAS is built on BSD. So uh, it's not specifically aimed at FreeNAS, but obviously uh, it is a service that it relies on. So very cool uh, that they updated this and fixed it. I saw as cool as also Tavis. I've done a few videos and mentioned him. He's a wonderful researcher, quite brilliant over at uh, the Google Project Zero. Now they also added a clarification, replacing disk to grow a pool. And here's the page on this. So replacing disk to grow a pool. The recommended method for expanding the size of a ZFS pool is to pre-plan the number of disks in a VDEV and stripe the additional VDEVs from pools from additional capacities needed. But adding VDEVs is not an option if there's not enough unused disk ports. And with the short of this, I won't read all of it and I'll leave a link to the quote, of course. When you're looking at FreeNAS and people ask, well, can I just add more drives kind of willy-nilly and it'll just magically do it. And the ZFS is an incredibly powerful file system, incredibly resilient file system. That's why I like it. But that also means there are certain limitations that come with all that redundancy that they built in. And one of them is when you build a pool, it's that size. When you build that many VDEVs in it, it's that size. So it's you have to assemble it differently. Or there is an edge case that I've not done a video on before, but that's what this clarification is about. Let's say I have four two terabyte drives and I want to replace those with four eight terabyte drives. Well, I can replace them, but replacing one of them doesn't give me that extra storage. You have to replace all of them. So you go through, replace a disk, wait till it resilvers, replace a disk, wait till it resilvers, repeat this for each drive in that particular pool. Once you've done that, once the final drive has been replaced, it will grow to that larger size and you'll have more storage. So there is a way you can do that. So if you are planning a replacement, it's a slow and more arduous way to replace it because you have to wait for each drive to rebuild. But that is a way to grow the pool. And they have some clarifications on exactly how that process works when you're doing it. So there's some risk involved, obviously. That's why they still recommend backing it all up. And to me, if you're going to recommend backing it all up, which I do anyways, um, but obviously if it's uh, off-site backups versus if you can back it up locally, that much more awesome. You back it all up locally, replace the drives, copy it all back to the other drives, and uh, it's actually going to be probably a faster process to do. But of course, uh, you know your experience uh, may be different than mine, or your hardware availability and what you have to work with may be different than what I have to work with. So I understand, but this clarification is in here. Now, a couple edge cases. Uh, as an edge case, if you install another instance of an already installed plugin that in, in that installation fails, the cleanup from the failure will also delete the data set for the first installation. Now, I don't really have many use cases I can come up with where I want to install the same plugin multiple times. But if you have that use case and you have to be careful if you're doing that and there's a failure because it could delete the other plugin, uh, you could obviously help mitigate this by using snapshots or as they say, uh, do the plugin from the command line and that's the way to solve it as well. So that's in there. The mega cloud service currently broken. Uh, so that's not going to be fixed until version 11.3. Kind of related um, is the Amazon Cloud Drive. Now, this is not the same as Amazon S3 bucket storage, but the Amazon Cloud Drive. And there's an entire crazy forum post that's really, really long going on about, well, was it 360 posts here of Amazon and why they 
got rid of it. Uh, it's a long running problem apparently. And like I said, this is the cloud drive by Amazon. They've decided to deprecate or remove our clone support for cloud drive. You still can do this with their uh, S3 bucket, so you can still connect it to Amazon. Um, I just wanted to make sure there's a clarification that. But other than that, I don't see any reason not to load it. There's uh, lots of minor errata details. Like I said, I'll leave a link to this so you can uh, read through everything for some of the clarifications, fixed grammatical errors, and all those little details that matter quite a bit. Um, but I thought it was still pretty cool. Um, because they also fixed, oh, uh, one last thing is they did fix some weird notices and I don't think I've seen this, uh, but there were problems with the way net data would send alerts and apparently they fine tuned that a little bit better. So if you were getting a bunch of random net data alerts, uh, they did some fine tuning to kind of solve that problem. Uh, but that's it. I'll leave a link so you can download this, but I don't see any reason why not to upgrade it. So, uh, so far so good. Everything's working. I will comment. Uh, I didn't have any other, like the jails that I do have, which right now on this FreeNAS server, there's only a single jail. I just run um, actively on there sync thing which worked fine uh the ui feels really responsive and all the things are working in terms of like the menus the temperatures the drive temps are showing no issues there when we were uh, looking at the drive statuses but i still don't use and maybe in the future i will do some testing with the beehive virtual machine summary i still have any virtual machines uh, in here but there's nothing in your rata that says you should have any problems if you have virtual machines all right and thanks and thank you for making it to the end of the video if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.